Good morning, church. It's a pleasure and privilege for me to stand here before your presence in the presence of the Almighty Angels, the ones who came here to teach us, to encourage us, and at the same time to take a record everything what is going to happen here. Do you know that God has access to your mind, to your brain? God is the one who check your motives, why you're here, what for you're here. The good news, that Satan have no ability to read your mind. But he very, he's very clever. He knows your inclination. He knows your weak and strong sides. And he sets up traps around you that you would definitely get in one of it. As you remember, last studies, we had about that our thoughts, how they come up. And we've learned that thoughts come from three sources. Help me out. First one. Where the thoughts come? The thoughts come from God. Okay, God through the Bible gives us the right thought. The second one. Second one comes from Satan. Satan gives us something to, to think, to meditate upon. He provides information for us. And third one, just because we are super busy, over busy, overwhelmed, and something on our heart, and we think about that, that's why it comes. And also we talk that we as a humans, we really sometimes we cannot control our thoughts even. They come up, they pop up without even we asking them to come. And sometimes they come in the wrong time. But thoughts, your thoughts are a result of what you're going through early. The thoughts would not come from tomorrow. Usually thoughts come from today in the early morning, yesterday, week before, month, year, even decades ago. So if you feed your soul, your mind with the right food, then your thoughts are clear and sound. Because if you are watching something, if you are playing some games that is not fitting with your status as a Christian, of course those thoughts will come in a not a good time. I heard the testimony of sister who said that she was uh, showing on showing uh, up on the bank uh, without um, proper identification ID, and uh, she was giving a chance, right to go by the supervisor who overrides. Do you know that our identity is according to John chapter 13, verse 35, it's written, Jesus Christ gives us very clear what is our identity for this world. And it reads, by this, by this, people will know that you are my disciples. By what? If we, you will have loved for one another. So this is your identity. This is your identity. Brother, if it happens, if it happens that you lost your identity for some reasons, for some reasons, you have a good chance using that analogy today in the beginning of our study. The one who can overwrite and sign it for you only when you, on a condition, if you accept his righteousness and he definitely can take you through. Our study for today is, should we do good, should we do evil, that good may come? Can we? I'm not saying to break God's commandments completely. We know that's bad. We, we, there's no question. doesn't come even to our mind, these thoughts. But how about make some shortcuts just to make it easy? Or that just circumstances happen that we have to act like this. And tomorrow we will be back on track. How that would work. How that would affect our salvation. Not only us personally, but people who are uh, surrounding us. These questions I would like to discuss with you today. Obedience includes both the means and the end. God wants us really to be obedient because this is the bottom line. And Benjamin Franklin once said, sin is not harmful because it is forbidden, but it is forbidden because it's hurtful. Because it's hurtful. That's why. That, that's why. And the first note I have here from Review and Herald, you have on the back of your uh, bulletin, the originator of evil, Satan, comes with a stilted thread, thread presenting 
plausible theories to the people of God, telling them that if they do this or that, even though it may be questionable, they will gain great advantage and the end will justify the means. He tries to persuade them that the eating of the forbidden fruit will be the to them a source of great good. When men listen to him, the spiritual insight is deemed, and the power of distinguishing between good and evil is lost. What was the idea behind it? What is Satan trying to convey them in? He said, no, 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 you don't have to cancel or disobey completely. But at this time, would be good for you to do it. That's what it says there, no? That's what he comes. If you will eat, you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. Is he using the same technique today, the same method, or that was just for Adam and Eve? Just the same. He never changed, and we know that the worst thing, worst thing is that knowing we still making the same mistakes as as they did. Many passages forbid uh, forbid to uh, act different from the what the word of God says in Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15 from verses 9 through 13. Maybe we will not read all 9 and 13, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. What is the commandment of men? The Jesus Christ says, but in vain they do worship me. In other words, they can do many manipulation. They can do come and attend and do keep the, keep the services, but it says in vain. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And verse 13 goes, and, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. If God tells us what work to do and we do different, we are following God's teachings. Okay, if we, if God says, do this and we are changing, it's already, uh, it's already man's teaching. Okay, if we disobey God. But the same thing, if God tells you what means to use, how to do it, and you choose different means, different way to do it, you're still following human tradition. It's not necessary for you to change completely route, but if you can stay in the same route, but just use your methods, your techniques. I want you to take in Exodus chapter 25, when in verse 9, when God command Moses to build the ark. Ark of the Covenant had a very specific, unique role for the people of Israel at that time, even for us as well. When God says, you, you have to build the Ark of the Covenant, that I will dwell with you. And verse 9 says, according, do it according all that I show thee. After the pattern of a tabernacle and the pattern of all instruments thereof, even so shall he make it. And I uh, translation is, sounds like this. Make this tabernacle and all the furnishing exactly like the pattern I will show thee. Did God give any room for improvement to Moses? No. no. He says, do it. Exactly what I, what I, what I showed to you. I like Apostle Paul who was admonishing Galatians and after he preached them the gospel, because he said in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, the gospel is a power unto salvation to every believer, to me first and to everybody, to Greek and Romans, anybody, any, everybody. He says, but though we are or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. If we're trying to slightly change our doctrinal things or the methods that God already gave us instruction, that's what the Bible says, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say, verse 9, 
I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that he have received, let him be recursed. In other words, once you learn it, once you accept it, don't try to adjust to your unconquered bad habits or adjust it to your culture or family tradition or any other society where you're living. You have to change and fit in that formula, but not try to try formula to stretch a little bit to fit you. Do you follow me? Do you understand what I'm trying to make a point in? You have to fit in that, but never try to fit that formula upon you. And that's, that's what, that, that's what it is. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way, Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto men, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I think so. I had a talk to a person recently who said that, well, we will, I have to pray about that. I said, brother, we cannot pray about something that is written in the Bible. I'm not against prayer. Don't take me wrong. But I will never pray for something that is written. Unless you don't understand that. You have to pray for uh, that God will reveal it to you the way how he wants you to know. Okay? Th that, is the, that is the dilemma. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and learn not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Brethren, we are, as we study in our Sabbath school, we are in a condition as a ten virgins today. We're slumbering and we're trying to, from time to time, wake up. Okay, yeah, we are, I'm still here. I'm still here. But that's not the right way. You have to be on the top of it. And every time be sober and vigilant. Lord, teach me. Lord, search me. Lord, guide me. Not, Lord, give me and provide. I'm not saying you cannot pray that prayer. But first you have to be in harmony with his will. And after that, you can ask, uh, ask more things. Revelation chapter 22, verse 11, 18 and 19. Revelation 22, 18 and 11. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall what do? Add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. And trust me, nobody wants to miss what is written in Revelation chapter 21 because that's one of the most encouraging and promising chapter there. How the New Jerusalem is presented and the description about the landscape and things what we will see one day. Okay, Revelation 22, it in encourages us and at the same time warns us, warns us not to add, not to take it away. Next one, uh, God will, God's will may, may or not specify the means we should use. Matthew 28, 20, one of the greatest commission that we ever received through a disciples. It says that I'm living, but I'll be with you. And he's sending his disciples out and tell them, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even to the end of the world. How much to, che to teach they supposed to? All. All. A-L-L. There is a very short word, but it says all. Not omitting. Not assuming that is not important. It's not relevant anymore because that was for that time. This is now we're living with you. We are New Testament creature, uh, Christians and so forth. We are Old Testament 
that's not it. All scripture is given according uh, 2 Timothy 3, 15 and 16 for our admonition, encouragement and reproof and rebuke. Uh, gospel worker you have in your bulletin as well this quote uh, page 489 I have been shown that human instrumentalities are liable to seek after too much power and try to control the work themselves they leave the Lord God the mighty worker too much out of their methods and plan and do not trust him everything in regard to to the advancement of the work. No one should for a moment fancy that he is able to manage those things that belong to the great I am. God is in his providence, is preparing a way so that the work may be done by human agents. And then let every man stand at his post of duty to act his part through this time and know that God is his instructor. It brings me back to Esther chapter 4 verse 16. When Mordecai makes the appeal to his niece. What did he say? Who knows for what cause you reach that. But God brought you not for time. For such a time as this. That you can be a one an instrument in God's hands. Brethren, we are all, without any exception, small and, and grow up. We are here for a very exceptional case. And God has a plan for each of you. I really like this quote when it says that God wants to use his agents. And we have to be ready to fulfill his work and act his part for the time. And know that God is his instructor. I'm, I'm not saying that you got, got completely take away your initiative, but your initiative should also go through his will and request, Lord, would be that okay? And have his approval. Okay? Uh, sometimes we don't have that specific instruction as God gave to Moses because when we go back to Exodus 25 there was a specific dimension the material word to use in Genesis chapter 6 verse 14 Genesis chapter 6 verse 14 God is giving instruction to Noah how to build the ark make thee an ark of gopher wood rooms shall thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And so forth. I'm skipping some of the parts. But did God give instruction what material to use? Yes. Did God give dimension? The size and floor and blueprint. But did God tell him what tools to use? Okay, that was for you. We call that general authority. We used to have sometimes we say... Oh, Bible doesn't specify this. Yes, that's why God gave you the wisdom and he gave you the Holy Spirit who controls your conscience, controls your words, your actions, that you would not make a mistake, go in the same line. Even though you didn't find exactly that Jesus Christ forbid you to go to the this website and watch those dirty things. But you know that whatever you saw, you will reap. If you put something in your mind, it will come up. Uh, through your words and action later on. You don't have to be specific. Find out about internet. There is much more than that. Okay. And um, that's why Genesis 6.22. Noah did according to all. Again word all. All that God commanded him. That would include the means and the ends. Not Noah not only built the ark. He also used the materials God commanded so when god teaches us an end to achieve the and means to use it um, to achieve it obedience requires us to respect both the means and the ends it's a very serious subject i really want us to to get in and the next would be from christ object lessons i believe you have the two quotes chapters um 
Christ Object Lessons, page 60, verse, uh, paragraph 3. The word of God often comes in collision with men's hereditary and cultivated traits of character and his habits of life. Is it so or just me? <laughs> Many times it sounds right, but doesn't work for me. I wish this verse to be applied to someone else. But the good ground hearers in receiving the word accepts all its conditions and requirements. His habits, custom, and practices are brought into submission to God's word. In his view, the commands of finite, erring men sink into insignificance beside the word of infinite God. With a whole heart, with an undivided purpose, he is seeking the life eternal, and at the cross of loss, yeah, loss, persecution, or death itself, he will obey the truth. I love the words of Martin Luther in 1500. He said, here I stand, so help me God. When he was brought in Rome, before the papacy, all these clergy, all the, the top, top leaders of the world at that time, and they were trying to bend him, break him, and they were forcing him to deny what he was preaching, writing about. He said, all what I can apologize for my words, my tones, my, my expression, but not for the truth that I put it there. So do you. You don't have to apologize for truth, my dear brethren, although you have to be polite to speak it. But the truth should stay. If you, if not you, who else? You might meet one time that person. If you miss that opportunity, then he is gone or she is gone. And if she or he lost his soul, you're going to be responsible for that. Because you lost the privilege, opportunity to talk about it. Let's take a couple Bible, about Bible, uh, Bible examples. Leviticus chapter 10 verses 1 and 2. Sad story. Very sad. Very sad. Noble man. The one who's supposed to lead the nation. The one who's supposed to give an example. And they mess up and the uh, fire went down. I'm talking about Nadab and Abahu. You know that. What did they do? They took matches, whatever they had at that available at that time. And, and made, made the strange fire, brought it in. And as a result, what happened? They lost, they lost their lives. Right there. Right there. Fire was there. What was wrong? Fire was there. Brethren, the case of Nadab and Abahu, Abahu is still valuable today. All of us are not exempt from the same thing. If you have a good cause, but using the wrong methods, bringing strange fire, God is a zealous God. He said, look, you mess up your job. I don't want to speculate, but if they would go to ask Father for advice and go to their knees and pray for forgiveness, I believe, I believe they would be forgiven by the merciful I am. But since they try to trick and go around, guess what? What happened? Brethren, we have to have a motives, right motives, and we have to have a pure heart. Otherwise, God would not accept that uh, sacrifice, no matter how big it is. I remember I, I sh shared with you this story that happened in Southern, Southern California, and the man was walking in with his friend in a fast food restaurant and grabbed lunch, whatever was there, and uh, grabbed a pack and went to his car and later on he realized there was a by mistake the teller the one who was serving him uh, was keeping cash money there in that pack and packs were identing because that was for service uh, to serve to carry out by mistake he handled him that one and he realized he opened it up and his car he was shocked there is a lot of money now he was a very honest man. He went back. He went back and handled the money back to the owner. Which was very 
surprising to the owner of that restaurant. He said, look, I'm so grateful to you. I'm so appreciating you, what you did. Let me take a picture. It happened there was some reporters were there. They want to post his picture in the newspaper and all those things. I said, look, I don't mind it to have your appreciation, but I don't want my picture will be there. Why not? They thought maybe he's so humble, but it was a different reason. He said, look, the lady who is with me is not my wife. And I don't want my wife to see that picture later on. See, what wrong did he do? He did a perfect job. Honest. But does that justify something else what he was doing? See, my dear brethren, no matter what you do, your sacrifice has to be whole. Because God is definitely after you when you're missing something or adjusting something or trying to change something. First Samuel, briefly, 15. The God told, uh, uh, First Samuel chapter 15, verse 3 and 10 to 23. We'll not read all. I'll just bring to your uh, memory. I believe you've read that about the Saul who was first king of Israel. And God told him, go and destroy completely Alma, uh, Amalek. Amalek. Uh, utterly destroy. And he did. How much he did? He did a good job, brother. He did. He won. He destroyed. Except that little things. What he did. First, he saved the king. The king. There was a custom of that land to bring us a trophy. To show. To prove that. Look. I got him. I got him. I won. And he is now uh, humiliated. And second, he saved the animals. The best, not any, not any. The best of the best for the sacrifice to God of Israel. What did God say? To obey is better than sacrifice. Obedience, that's what it matters. No matter how much you bring. The lady was putting just two coins. And Jesus pointed to her and said, she put it more than any of you here. In other case, I want to talk to you about when uh, Israelites were fighting with the Philistines and they they also trying to use this pagan tradition. They brought the Ark of the Covenant to the battlefield and they lost it. The Philistine took it, took it over. And after a while, they decide to return and they put on a car and they put the calves ahead and the calves put a, put a car and uh, finally Israelites receive it back. They put it in some place and it was there. The man who hosted was very much blessed. And David thought, I should bring it. I should bring it. I should bring it back. And he was on the way. It was everything was arranged. It was a good thoughts, good motives. And he was in the right direction, except some things. Everything according to Romans chapter 15 verse 4, Romans chapter 15 verse 4, was that other things are written a fourth time. We have written for our learning that we through patience and comfort all the scriptures might have hope. Okay? As you know, God, when God made this order, regulation prescribed to people of Israel, God told them, Never put the Ark of the Covenant on any card. It has to be carried in their hands. I'm not going to read many references. I can give it to you. Exodus 37, chapter uh, verse 5, Numbers 4, verse 15. It was a special people assigned to Aaron and his sons have made the end of the uh, covering and sacrifice has to be done in all those things. And... Uh, David wanted to bring the symbol of God's presence into the city. The people came out in mass to honor God. Oza just wanted to keep the ark from falling. What did he do wrong? 
it was not done properly in the first place. See, because if you are in a leadership position, I want to, as a parent, as a church leader, whatever position you have, if you're doing something wrong, it affects your people who was who is under you. Of course, that does not take responsibility from them to act properly, as in case of Oza. I imagine if today the case of Oza would be ha, would happen, all the whole media would be full of debates. Should he die or should he not? People like to debate today. People like to debate today about many things. Should be same-sex marriage or not? Should we do this? They debating about principle that was not made by them. They have no right, nor you nor me have no right to discuss this issue. If you go to book of Genesis, it says the man leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife and be one flesh. Amen. That, that's it. That doesn't say any, any, anything any other way, any other way. No matter what you take, if you go to New Testament, you'll find the same things that those people who are homeowners and other things, um, they will find their destiny in the lake of fire. Amen. Revelation chapter 21, verse 9, and many other, 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 other statements, and 22 as well. Brethren, the my point is very simple. The Oza wanted, Oza wanted to help. It's many strange things. It says when the ox hit the threshold, uh, floor of the threshold, they stumble. You know, according to my knowledge, the threshold is very hard ground. Should be flat and stretched. How they happen, nobody knows. Like I said, we don't, we're not going to speculate about that, but it happens. It happens to show, to prove that you know, have to mess in God's business with your own idea, your own understanding. Just the same as with uh, sons of Aaron. Just the same, the same way. For sake of time, we'll move on. And uh, in New Testament, the same thing. We have m- more examples. And uh, one just I want to take from New Testament for us to have a clear idea that ba- the Bible is a very balanced book. It has proof from either way you go. Matthew 7, 21, 22, and 23. What it says there. Many people in the last days will come and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not? It did so many miracles in your name. What would be the answer? Said, depart from me, you who have practiced lawlessness, because they are not doing the will of the Father. God says, I never knew you. No matter how well organized you are, no matter how good you look, how impressive you are, there's some things very impressive. You have to admit that. Some people have... Uh, much better services than we are. They have better choir. Maybe they have more eloquent even speakers and many other things. But that's not what should drive us to. We have to look to the essence. Is everything what we're doing according to God's will? Is it in harmony with God's will? Evangelist, page 93, paragraph 2. Success, the result of order and harmonious action. God is God of order. Everything connected with heaven is in a perfect order. Subjection and thorough discipline mark the movements of the angelic host. Nobody's flying like this. They exactly know where to go. Success can only attend order and harmonious action. God requires order and system in his work, now no less than in the days of Israel. All who are working for him are to labor intelligently, not in careless, haphazard manner. He would have his work done with a faith and exactness that he may place the seal of his approval upon it. As I said earlier, today people debate about morality, which they shouldn't. God says, 
in Revelation 21 a that those who commit murder will be uh, put in in a uh, lake of fire. Morality in the sense that people talk about the, about abortion, the women's right about that matter. They talk about euthanasia. They talk about suicide and all those things which God says, look, you can, you didn't, you are not give, the one who gives life. Okay. And you are not the one who authorized to take it because you cannot restore it. Simple as it is. Today also people are living a immoral life. They have promiscuous relationship, which is not God's will. Because Bible says in Hebrew chapter 13, marriage is honorable in all and the bad undefiled. But uh, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. No matter what you say or what you think, what they do, what the government of United States does, even on the level of Supreme Court, Bible remained the book that really gives direction to your moral life. There's laws are changing every day and every state has different, but that cannot take us or convince us. No, we know it. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Uh, first Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. No, we know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulteresses. None of them shall inherit the kingdom of God. Divorce and remarriage should fall in the same category. People justify the things. I, I don't love her. I don't like him. And Matthew chapter 19 verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. And whoso married her, which is put away, does commit adultery. We are not happy and that's why we divorce. If you have the same goal, any, any difference can be worked out if you are in God's hands. And that is a big question. It's not for this time. It's for another study. And a um, couple more things when we wrapping up. Lying. Do you think it, to lie for good cause it's okay? No. Have you heard that white lie? Yes. How about that? Police stops you said, sir, why are you text? No, I didn't. <laughs> or something like that. White lie or any color of lie does not exist. <laughs> if you go back to Revelation, uh, liars are... Revelation 22, verse 14, 15, Revelation 21, 8, and 27, they are in the same rank with the murderers, adulterers, and other people. Liar. Does not, Bible does not specify what kind of liars. It says liars. Men have justified every kind of evil on the ground that it was, it was done for a good cause. Well, I help people. People all people have these strange worship services. They're beating the drums. The roof almost lifting, lifted in that in that building. And they say, "Look, this is for good cause. We attract people, young people, and that's only way how we can reach young people. If they are coming for that rock music concert, I don't think they're coming for God." It's very serious as well. The same thing with the church income. People are organized the bingo, all kind of show to attract, to make money because God, I mean, church needs money. What the Bible says about that? God ordained what? Tithes and offering. If you want New Testament, Paul says you have to put aside every first day of the week. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 2. And when I come, that's you not know, going to be commotion. I'm just collecting. That's it. That's it. Church also should not be involved in any, um, I would say, support of any candidate for any position. Yes. Because today is very, the influence of evangelical um Society is very powerful. If some of the candidates get endorsement from this uh, group, he's almost almost there. He's almost there. So the church has no 
right to support it. I'm don't, now the quote says that if you su uh, support any of candidate and he get to the position, any decisions what he or she make, you are accountable for that decision. God reproves men because he loves them. He wants them to be strong in his strength, to have well-balanced mind and symmetric character. They, then they will be examples to the flocks of God, leading them to precept and example near to heaven. Then they will build up a holy temple of God. Sense of the time, November 6, 1901. Satan, as a strong man, arm is continually on the watch, seeking to bring a questionable methods and thereby mar the war of God. Murder, yeah. He would be well pleased to eclipse the brightness of God principles by the selfishness of the principles of which he works. If he possibly can, he will turn ship, tarnish the pure gold of character. If he can place the false where the true should be, his object is gain. He's not saying, it's science of the time, November 6, 1901, paragraph 6. He is not jumping to change the whole thing together. Just bring you something that you can introduce in your service. I'm not saying that we should not do different methods. Absolutely. We should make the nice banners and uh, or attractive tables with the books and so forth. I've read the story about one man who was blind and begging for money. He had his head down on the steps and uh, very few coins were there. And uh, the, the man was passing by and stopped and looked at the sign. What he put there, it was written, help me please, I am blind. And he made some correction and went to his direction. In the afternoon later, when he was coming from work, he stopped by and the blind man recognized his bus, his Food stab. He said, sir, and the, the hat was full at that time. He said, what did you do? What, what did you, what did you change here? I mean, he said, I didn't put anything what is not right. I just rewarded. It. What did he put? He put like this. Now it's a spring time and I'm so sorry I cannot see because I'm blind. Help me please. That's it. That's it. He just changed the wording. He didn't change it. He said, I didn't put anything what is not truth. I just put different wording. That's methods, brother. But when we come to the principles, principles never can be changed. Never. I would like to bring your attention back again to those words in Samuel chapter 15, verses 21 to 23. God's work must be done God's way. And... Um, if it's to be acceptable by him. Because God is more pleased in obedience than in sacrifice. Amen. The appeal is or question is how then we should preach today the gospel in the age of internet and uh, all this modern technology. 21st century. The same thing the Lord Jesus did reach the people on his day. The same thing. Preach the word. Be instant. In season out of season. That is my wish and prayer for all of us today. And remember John uh, 60, 63. It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. May God invigorate our hearts and make us zealous for his cause. Amen. Amen. Amen.